Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for part 2 of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update where I'm going to be taking a bit of a look into how we've um, been dealing with some more sciences and, uh, and dealing with all the stuff that comes out of that as well. So we're going to start off here with the Astro 4 science, and in uh, last week's video I, t I talked about these two, um, these two spaceships we built up here to go out and get the asteroid data and the, so and the solar data. And these have been waiting a little while for us to get the, the probe rockets and the actual probes themselves that are ready to go out and, and go and collect them. One part of that is, as I talked about yesterday, that we've now got the probe rockets available and, and that's how we've been able to start using them for the satellite launches here. But these are now also being picked up by the logistics robots and brought from the red chests up here over into the blue chests over here. So we now have a supply, we now have, we've got up to the 10... Um, um, space probe rockets we're trying to get to before we uh, before we actually launch this spaceship but we've only got to five of the asteroid belt probes so we're still a bit short on some of the resources for those because as discussed we don't want to launch the spaceship until it's got the full 10 of both available in it and once it gets to that point then we'll, I'll go I'll need to fly off with it manually the first time and make sure everything is working and then the system should be able to run automatically and so over here well what, let's have a look, quick look at why things aren't working what is it that we're short of uh, okay we're currently short of data cards and this is a problem that I sort of traced backwards through the uh, th through, through the system as, as you do when you're trying to work out what on earth has happened. And so over here, I looked up here and we, we saw, and previously we didn't have this ni nice happy supply of, um, of, of memory cards coming out of here. Uh, as you can see along here, there's been a lot of, a lot of gaps on here. We're down to a, a mere uh, couple of thousand in each of these, in each of these warehouses. Um, and the Troy, it won't call a train until it gets to, I think it's 10,000. Certainly, um, and it might be a bit less than that because it's 50 stacks per warehouse. Anyway, we quickly narrowed down the problem over here to be the uh, the, the lack of red circuits that were coming through. So you, you need, as you can see, you need red circuits in order to make these memory cards. And those those the, the uh, supply of those had broken. And it turned out to be that, that was because down on Norvis, the station over here where the red circuits are supposed to be dropped off to allow the train to bring them up to Norbit had been named incorrectly. I think it was named it was a named lube drop off station after this one. So maybe they've been an accidental copy paste. Maybe because it's, it's a weird one because it had been working absolutely absolutely fine when it was um, when it was first built and it'd been working fine for quite a long time but it has now since stopped so I'm guessing that when one of these extra stations was put in uh, some settings were accidentally copied onto it or something like that. Um, that seems to be the most likely explanation but I'm, but I'm not sure <laughs> so the idea is that this train here will uh, will this this train sorry will pick up red circuits from over here this is right over on the other side of the base it then brings them over to here drops them off in this station where they get put into the warehouse and then the train that rattles up and down the uh, the elevator will then come back down here we'll pull into the station here we'll, we'll fill up with those uh, red circuits and take them up but but as we, as you've seen before, okay, it has now come. It has now dropped down, so it's nearly here and ready. But these trains are all also doing downstream stuff, so it means the trains take a bit longer to do the round trip than they normally would, which is why it's taking a bit longer to refill the buffers. Well, on the one hand, we could say that actually maybe we shouldn't be using the, the trains to bring to do da, to do a downstream run as well, because it means it's an extra thing for them to be doing. It slows them down quite a bit because they have to travel all the way over to the spaceport before they can then come down the space elevator. But on the other hand, having the uh, having the trains doing that makes it a little bit cheaper on, on cable because when you send a train up and down here, it always costs a certain amount in wear and tear on the elevator, um, plus a bit more depending on what the train's carrying. But if the train so so it's better to have the trains full like this one when they're coming down and bringing bringing scrap down as well as taking useful stuff back up again. And so as it, and so it probably makes sense to have it do that. And most of the time, that's going to be absolutely fine. The only reason it's struggling this time is because the the buffers all emptied up in space and so the train is having to rattle back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in order to get the in order to refill the buffer and get everything running a bit uh, more quickly than it normally has to when we're in a sort of a, a gently ticking over and everything is working as it's supposed to the system should be absolutely fine and here we see it filling up very very quickly and so the train's going to head up with some more red circuits very very soon and then we'll have all the uh, all the extra memory cards up here that we need uh, and they'll fl come, fl come flooding through here well actually now it looks like we've run that run out of something else yes i think we've run out this looks like the uh, the blank data card substrates have been run out of so that should be a there should be another train that comes up bringing those up to probably presumably to here but at the moment it hasn't made it so okay it looks like so it looks like the red circuits are no longer the problem we're going to have to have a look now have a look into the um into the blank data card substrate Let's see if we can find those. Sorry, the rough data card substrates. Yes, and those come in here. Oh, yeah. So we do, we do have we have a solid blue belt of them coming in. So it's not an in absolutely enormous quantity. Um, but once again, because we're now trying to refill the buffer with the data cards, we're getting through a lot more of these things than we than we're used to. So I guess we'll just fill this train up as much as we can. We'll send it up there and see. So and so eventually, I think all the buffers should fill back up again. But it's going to be a little while, and we're going to have to rattle these trains back up and down a few times. And this one again is doing the downstream route. Um, it's also got some 
not not got in activity. Oh, the the rear um, the rear wagon is still filling up. There we go. So now it can go. Take all the uh, data card substrates up there, and we can start building a few more of those data cards. The other problem that I'm having with the data cards is that those are being made down here. And let's turn the station names off so we can see what we're doing. They're being made down here in the data card creation area, and because it's been a problem for a while all of the different science areas have run out of them. So the when they're made here, because we're not using LTN, they'll be taken out by, and they're using distance to set the priority, essentially. So first, they'll probably go to energy science here, then they'll go to bioscience, then they'll go to the bus if we need any on here, and we do need a few, but I don't know if we've actually run out. Then they'll probably go to... Um, uh, to, to astro science over here then finally when all those have done they'll be dropped off over here ready to be made into the probes and then eventually after that they'll be taken over to Mike's material science area over here so yeah it's going to take a little while for all of the buffers to fill up and that's why it's become such a problem because we've been short of them so, for so long lots and lots of buffers have ended up rather empty and therefore it's rather a, it's rather difficult to then fill everything back up again it's going to take quite a long time quite a lot of throughput because each of these each of these stations will have a buffer of several thousand of them um, just because that's a train load, and you, you kind of need to do it in 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 a train load at a time. But here we go. Here are the uh, the rough data substrates coming through and starting to fill it back up again. And so last week I talked about all the little tweaks that needed to be made to the Astro Four Science, and I've I've done all of those now. So as you can see up here, we have what looks like a healthy supply. I mean, I can't really tell by the numbers because these systems aren't running, but a healthy supply of the other three types of data card. Once we've managed to launch the spaceship, we'll then also have the asteroid data coming in as well. We feed that into these machines, and then we'll start getting the Catalog 4s out. And then we're basically done with Astro 4, because I've done all the rest of the work as well. And that includes up here in the science area, We've got, now we've got the supplies of all the different, in theory, we've got a supply of all the different intermediates coming in from the beryllium area. So you see over here, we've got the, um, we've got one of the, we've got the sort of sushi trains coming up. So that brings up all four of the, the ingredients at once that are needed. But, and we unload them into the, into the warehouse here. So as you can see, we've got a, a selection of all, I want to say a selection of all of them, but we're missing the sticks at the moment. For reasons we shall have a look into in a moment. But then those all come out of the bottom here. They get put onto these belts brought over here and then well the ingots get cut up into plates up here because that isn't something that benefits from productivity modules but all of the other ones the sticks the uh, scaffold and the bulkheads are all brought up from Norvis because if we make them on Norvis we can use productivity modules and save enormous quantities of beryllium and all of the other ingredients that go into them and so these then get fed in here we're, we're just now waiting for the Astro 4 catalogs to be fed into here as well and then we can start making the Astro 4 science packs although we haven't researched them yet because we're not quite ready to make them. So let's have a quick look and see why there's a shortage of beryllium sticks. So down here on Norvis, over here, uh, not quite here, here, yes, we have this machine here that's making them. It's making lots of them. They are being poured up this belt here, going into the station, which seems to be nice and full. That's good. Um, we have a train over here, beryllium pole drop. Let's, let's go and check out that one. Yep, that's unloaded. There's lots of them. Ah, there's a break in the belts over here. So uh, what we need to do in order to get that working is, you know, just... Look! Look when we uh, put belts down and, and see if there's a, a pylon in the way like that. Uh, or maybe I could I could have just moved the pylon and put the belts through. But under, underground there will be absolutely fine. So that'll sort that problem out. We can then unload this train properly so that it can then leave and go and get some more. And also, possibly more importantly, these beryllium sticks will be able to flow into here, which means they can come all the way up this belt, round here, uh, all the way along here. Good grief, this is a long belt. Um, and then up here into the station, and we'll be able to actually load this train up properly. Uh, because as you can see, this is waiting until it's completely full, and full means it needs another 17 aeroframe poles in that wagon, and that that and that is literally it. That is all it needs. It needs another 17 aeroframe poles, but because of, but because we don't have any more coming through, it's not been able to leave. And so this is one of the other things I've done in the in the last um, in the last stream is I've up fitted set set this train. So instead of just bringing up the beryllium scaffolds, I've upgraded it to my original plan, which is now to bring up all four of these things. And each of these rows are locked to being just those specific items. So we know the train will always bring exactly these things up and nothing else, nothing instead. It's just always going to be bringing these specific things in those specific slots in those quantities. Uh, and that means when it gets up to the top, it can unload and, and and so on. In fact, let's let's dispatch it. Then we can have a look at how the system works. We'll send that. Up off uh, to go up the uh, up up the ziggurat lickety split um heads off up there i did make a minor mistake with this train this train was originally set to go via downstream on the way down which meant that when it got to here it then unloaded all of its beryllium into the unloading system and i panicked and had to uh, had to go in and sort of try and fix that one up uh, which was unfortunate but you know it wasn't too, it wasn't too serious a problem but it was it was rather annoying so so these these sushi trains don't do the uh, don't do the downstream system anymore 
And so the train arrives up here in, in Norbit at the site in the science park and can then unload. So as you see it, uh, all of these things pour out and I've locked all these, as, as I was saying, I've locked all of these slots to make sure they only carry those sp specific um, resources up. You'll also notice that these bulkheads aren't getting unloaded, and that's because we're setting all we're using these things. We're setting it to make sure there's never more than a thousand ingots, never more than a thousand poles, thousand frames, and a thousand bulkheads stored in the warehouse. The train can go off now and go and get some more of the, the bits and pieces it doesn't have. And now we have that nice healthy supply of the um, the beryllium sticks coming through, and that means we can start making the science pack twos, and they'll start flowing through. And then, and as if by magic, we'll be able to start doing the science again. Back on Norvis, the uh, that train shows up here again. As you can see, it's still got part of its its cargo. But that's absolutely fine. It ran out of it ran out of the sticks. It ran out of the uh, scaffolds. So we'll start trying to fill up with these again. And we're, okay, there were 17 of them available. Uh, but we'll now see. Eventually, the uh, yes, here they come. Here, here are the new beryllium sticks that I've just freed up by uh, putting putting those belts in. So those can now flow in, and it'll 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 all start working again as if by magic. Isn't that lovely? Interestingly, for some reason, there seem to be a lot of aeroframe bulkheads on the aeroframe scaffolds belt here, which is a little bit weird and a little bit unfortunate because that's not supposed to be happening. Um, I might need to go in here and clear this one up, possibly even by hand, because these really shouldn't be here. There was another belt that had a load of bulkheads on it when it should only have had scaffolds. So th there was a there was a problem on the um, on, on the feed somewhere and I don't and I've not been able to find where it could have been so I think it must have been a temporary thing that has now been fixed it's it, but it's, it is a bit of a worry and I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for that that happening anywhere else um, in the meantime it would in theory sort itself out but only if we use the bulkheads a bit faster than the uh, than the scaffolds for a little while so yeah, that's a worry. I might see if I can um, if I can tweak the numbers and just get this pulled through artificially because that shouldn't be shouldn't be too difficult. One of the slightly funny things about the system, which I think I might have touched on before, is that we are bringing the um, we're bringing these beryllium ingots down in the train system. Uh, so they come down, they get dropped off here by this tra the train that st stops here, unloads them into this warehouse, and then we're pulling from this warehouse in order to put them back into into a train that's going back up to Norbit. So it's a little bit wasteful that we're bringing them down to send them back up again, but it does make the uh, logistics a bit simpler because it means we've got all four of the things we need for the, uh, for, for the astro science on the one train here, and therefore we don't need to try and fit in an additional station up here for the beryllium, dro beryllium drop-off. It also means that we can have sensible amounts of beryllium ingots here. So we're, we're aiming for about a thousand, whereas if we put in an actual station, then we'd have to bring in an entire train load, which would be 10,000. And so stockpiling stockpiling 10,000 beryllium ingots here seems a bit excessive. This way we only have a thousand of them, and that feels like a much more sensible number, even if it does mean sending a few more trains up and down the, um, the, uh, the elevator. And I did say earlier that we we're trying to avoid that because it's wasteful, but it's not that wasteful. I only feel a little bit guilty about it. And oh look, we've run out of uh, beryllium sticks once again already. One thing I do notice, because the trains, these trains have 50 slots in them and there's only four things, so like this one, we're only using four of the slots, I could, in theory, say actually we want to bring more beryllium sticks than anything else up, um, because that seems to be a thing we're getting through significantly faster. And I suspect we might be getting through them faster, because they're needed for tier 2 sciences, and I think the tier 2 sciences don't make quite as many. So when this runs, it uses... 40 aeroframe poles. Jeez, I didn't realise it was quite that much. In order to make two Astro Science Pack 1s. Uh, no, sorry, and, and two Astro Science Pack 1s in order to make four Astro Science Pack 2s. This one uses... 30 aeroframe scaffolds, so it's a smaller number, and that produces six Astro Pack Science Pack 3s. And you also use some of those Astro Science Pack 2s to make the Pack 3s. So... I think increasing the number of uh, the sticks that we bring up is going to be very, very useful. We would probably need to increase the number of um, ingots we're bringing up for the Astro 1 because it takes 20, oh, it's 20 beryllium plates, but that only makes the two packs. But because we're cutting the uh, ingots up into into uh, plates here, we get a, we get far more... We, we get that logistical efficiency boost from bringing them up as ingots, so we don't have that problem here. But I'm quite surprised it takes 40 of those to make the, make the for each for each time this runs to make the four. I think I will increase the number of beryllium poles that are being brought up in the train because at the moment we're ripping through them at such a rate that this isn't, isn't going to be very sustainable. All of these resources being brought in from the other planets means that we're also bringing in huge amounts of this sort of call it scrap, call it junk, whatever you like. A lot of this is coming in as well, and so we need to transport all of that down onto the planet. And it looks, as we look along here, it looks like Talos and uh, Agnea, Kothar, Snowdrop and Njord, they all seem to be absolutely fine. The, um, the Yes, there's quite a lot of stuff in this warehouse. Actually, I say quite a lot of stuff. There's 20 stacks. That's, that's less than a train, so that one, that one's absolutely fine. That's 250, so we could do with a couple of trains coming in here, but it hasn't over, overflowed from the warehouse yet, so it's not at what we would call a sort of a crisis level. However, over here, 
Uh, okay, Snowdrop has just had a ship come in, so it's unloading. But I, I was going to say, but Big Rid is, but I think a train has just come from Big Rid because that's just been unloaded. And uh, it looks like, actually, I have no complaints here whatsoever. All of these seem to be absolutely fine because Tristan has gone in and done some work uh, on the... Um, on, on the warehouses along here, on, on the train system along here, um, he's, he's, as we said last time, he's got some additional emergency trains over here, and he's now finished wiring them all in. So when one of when one of the warehouses along here fills up, we will immediately start dispatching more trains from here like that. There you go. There's one one leaving, probably because uh, Snowdrop has Snowdrop has gone above a certain quantity. Oh, maybe, maybe it's not Snowdrop. One of them, for some reason, the trains have been triggered, and so the uh, there is another train coming out to come, in, come and help unload all of this stuff. And all of this, as you've seen before, gets then taken down to Norvis, goes into the, uh, the, the downstream unloading system over here, and is dealt with appropriately. Tristan has added in significantly more st trains to this system. I think we're up to seven now. And so, yeah, at the moment, and, and he's upgraded all of these belts as well. So, there, yeah, there is stuff flowing through here. You can't see it through all of the upgrades that are trying to happen. But, yes, the, there's more of these trains now. So when the, when the, we're really unloading huge amounts of stuff, because perhaps three or four spaceships would come in at once, we can, we've still got plenty of trains down here that will be able to grab it and take it away. And so the uh, the, the train buffering system down here has been made a bit bigger to, to accommodate all those trains. Um, I guess we're not going to be able to use this uh, crossroads here to, to extend the rail network downwards, but never mind, there's another crossroads just over here that can, so I guess that's absolutely fine. As part of that, he's put in an additional stacker space over here in order to allow us to fit more trains in round on this on this loop loop of track here, um, because, again, we don't want to have them over, overflow, overflowing up here. We did have, before over here, we had a problem um, with the trains not being able to unload fast enough, but that's been mostly fixed by the introduction of using just a straight-up warehouse here as, a, as the, uh, as the, as the the unloader and sorter. Uh, and that's mostly working. The only thing is we seem to have an awful lot of stone in here uh, that we aren't get, we're getting rid of fast enough. We have a green belt of it just pouring straight out of the top here going into the going into into the uh, the train system over here to be taken away for wherever it's needed. But apparently that's not apparently a, a solid green belt of, fl of it flowing out like this just isn't enough to keep on top of um, everything that's coming in. I mean, look look at this. We've got all these numbers here flickering around. We've just got so much resource coming through from this and and these belts are struggling to keep up. There has been some additional upgrading going on over here, though. So there is an additional belt you can see here, where and so the stone firstly comes up this way and is prioritised to go off into the into the station over here, where a train will come in and take it away to anywhere that needs stone. Uh, if it's if there's if that fills up, it will then start to be fed round here, where secondly it can be taken off this way onto this belt, which also needs a bit of upgrading. I think the oh no, I was going to say it needs a bit of upgrading. It, it doesn't. It's just this warehouse down here is. Yeah, full in inverted commas. So this is where we're taking the uh, the stone away to be used for, well, every, everything that stone is turned into. So it's being turned into sand here to be made into hydrogen chloride, to be made into silicon, to be made into glass, all of these things that we need large quantities of. Um, these look like they could do with a bit of an upgrade because we don't seem to have very much glass or silicon available. So uh, that's something to put on the old to-do list. This is going to need to be, yeah, if we're looking at this, we've got, okay, we've got we've got the advanced, uh, oh no, these are filtration plants. Uh, we've got rather low level uh, furnaces down here. So this could be run a lot faster. These machines all need to be, re this, in fact, this whole area needs to be redesigned with modern beacons and just modern, uh, modern chemical plants anywhere it's possible. Actually, these these already are modern chemical plants. That's fine. Um, but basically, they just need to be, have speed beacons and maybe faster belts put in. And this whole area could be made a lot faster. Maybe better productivity modules as well. Um, and then we could get decent fl flows of, um, of of glass coming out here. And that would allow us to use up some of the, some, a bit more of this, these ridiculous quantities of stone we seem to have. So interestingly, down here, we I'm not quite sure how the prioritization is set up. But let's, let's have a quick look. So... Uh, this is just this is not doing anything. Okay, so we're flowing the stone in from these stations as quickly as possible. We're flowing it in from up here whenever there's less than three thousand in the in in the, all of the stations. That seems a bit weird, but okay. Uh, so this is meant to be a top up, but since a lot of the stone that comes to here probably comes from here by train. I don't know why we're not just letting this flow all the time. Maybe somebody will let me know in the comments. If so, if, if you if you know, please let me know. <laughs> and we could also bump the uh, the limit up on this a little bit. Although it seems that this uh, green belt uh, flowing in and these four red belts coming out seem to be fairly well balanced. We could also put, possibly put in some direct belts coming from here. Uh, take bring another another maybe another purple belt bringing stone from here straight down to this this warehouse. Um, I don't know. I, I, other people have been worrying about this, and by other, by other people, I mean mostly Tristan. So there are. Um, I'll, I'll let him worry about how the prioritisation is done because I've not been involved enough with it to be sure of exactly how it's working. Uh, 
That said, this train does now seem to be unloading much more smoothly. We've got, yeah, we've managed, there's obviously been a little bit of a, a lull in the uh, supply coming in, and so we've managed to free up a bit of space in here, and we're, um, yeah, get, getting, getting the resources out at a decent rate. And so this system does seem to be basically okay. It's unloaded all of the trains that were in here. It's just about hanging on. <laughs> we are just throwing a lot of junk at it to keep it busy. The other problem we ran into with this area is there are a lot of trains coming in here. Some of them for collecting resources from, from the uh, sorter stations up here. Some of them for unloading the junk down here. Some bringing in core fragments like this one. And they all need to escape. And they're escaping by two different routes. So the ones that come in here to dump off all the, uh, all the junk come out this way and through this sort of little escape route at the bottom here. All the resource trains come out at the top. And Tristan has played with the uh, signals up here by putting in a, a rail signal here and a chain signal here that I believe is, is intended to prioritize the trains coming out from this way um, because the 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 junk drop trains were coming through at such a rate and they were just getting stuck up stuck a bit on the on the way trying to get out so this seems to have made things a bit smoother he's also cut a hole in the uh, in the rail here um, and, and put in a bypass that is i think uh, yes a bypass that runs around here to prevent trains that are coming up from down down this area that are heading up north from going through this area and causing even more congestion because a lot of the trains that come out of here are going to go around this turnaround system here and, and head back down to go to go basically you get to go back down here to get more junk to bring up to, to the uh, to the recycling area and so if we can if we can have any trains that are going up this way not interfere with them by bringing them round this entire area then it's going to make the system it's going to make it a lot easier for the trains to come out of here and loop back down here because they won't run into the trains that are trying to come upwards and so that should and and I was going to say that should alleviate the prop the congestion a lot and the fact that there isn't a train jam around here at the moment suggests it probably has that said there seems to be a bit of a train jam going on here what's the problem here so this train is trying to go in here it's trying to go into the same um lane as this one for some reason rather than you know taking one of the free ones uh what if i say um if i put it on manual back onto auto no it's still it still desperately wants to go into this middle lane rather than going into the top one not sure what's going on there um i, I thought trains were a little bit smarter than that but apparently not uh i'll leave it for, but i'll leave that for somebody else to look into because um I, I don't want to get jam all over my hands Back in space, and once again, thinking about science, uh, making science packs. So Tristan has been uh, working on the Energy 4 science, more or less in parallel to me working on the Astro 4 science. And so he's got the um, he's got his uh, research servers in along here that are going to be making up all of the um, all all of the actual uh, catalogs that we made into them. As you can see, he's got three of the data cards coming in. He's he's done the sort of same same thing I should do. He's made a proof of concept where he's got one machine making each of the types of data cards to make sure that he's got all of the inputs in the right place. He's got everything wired up correctly. Um, now the problem I sometimes run into with these sort of things is is you can you can wire everything up correctly. You'll get a couple of data cards out, and then you realise you've not hooked up one of the outputs properly, like one of the fluid outputs properly, or one of the the uh, card outputs, or something like that. And there is a buffer that's filling up somewhere. But it, this this all looks correct to me. I'm not uh, <laughs> not criticising Tristan's design here. It looks like it all looks right. But um, it's just, yeah, the the uh, the proof of concept system doesn't always work perfectly. But as you can see, he's got three of those cards coming through. So he's got the uh, one up here. We're making some sort of lightning data, uh, boson data, in fact, which is made by uh, bombarding something with a particle stream in a very, very cold area. Who knows? Um, but it makes, it makes him a data card there. And that needs him to bring in the pink clouds and the data cards. Not too bad. Then over here, he's got another one of those where you uh, you need to bring in a previous type of um, a previous type of data that you made for a, a previous science pack. So he's going to have to make sure that uh, wherever he's making the electromagnetic field data can keep up with the extra draw that's going to be put on it from the magnetic monopole data. But that's one of those things where you just, you get the system up and running, and then you watch to see where the problems are and, and improve things where they're needed. And that's bringing in the green cloud. So it's another another one of those um, high energy things that are being made over in the in the in the cloud storage area. Uh, and then down here we are oh yeah once again we are hitting this time we're hitting the fourth field data with a proton stream and again that make, apparently makes fusion test data so these these two he, he's needed to bring in both bring both of these cards down from somewhere further up north and i note with them um, interest he seems to be he seems to be running out of uh, london eye data um which is this the the the, 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 the book comes from oh and this one as well following this belt up we should eventually find why it is causing why it is having problems up so, uh, yeah, there's a shortage of these data cards. Yeah, here we go. This is where the data cards are being made. And so here we have, oh, we have a shortage of rare metals. So for some reason, there's not enough rare metals being brought up here. Uh, it's, it looks like that actually looks like quite a big problem here. So it might be, it might just be that the train isn't rattling up and down often enough with sufficient rare metals, or there might be a shortage of them down on Norvis. Looking down here, nope, there's plenty of rare metals available. They've all flowed through quite happily. Uh, but... 
But the problem is the train hasn't filled up, so it hasn't left. So Tristan needs to order larger quantities of basically probably just a bit of everything in order to get this train to trigger, head up and unload all those rare metals. And I expect the other thing that's, that's having problems is, is going to be, going to be fair, a fairly similar reason. And that would be down here with the, here we go, the London Eye data. Uh, this one is, oh, this one's run out of Holmium cables. Uh, maybe that's the problem then. So if we look down here once again, there are no Holmium cables in here. Right, so Tristan needs to start bringing Holmium cables up in this train as well, I think. And then there, and then that'll sort his problems out quite nicely because it'll be an extra thing to bring up. And there are Holmium cables just here, so you can bring those up. Maybe, I, I suspect he's still running on an old system from before we had those Holmium cables available. And he's making them on site up here. Yeah, there is a machine here that is trying to make Holmium cables. And it's got 50 of them in it, but it's not feeding them back out again. Maybe because we stopped wanting to because he's supposed to be bringing them up. I'm not sure exactly how this whole system is supposed to be working because once again it's somebody else's system. I do see that there's a load of Holmium cables in here but not in here where they need to be fed out from. So this whole system seems to be a little bit broken. Um, I'm going to leave this as a Tristan problem to fix it. Although, yeah, there's, So it should be feeding them through if there's less than 150 in here but it thinks there's 774. Yes, so because there's... <laughs> right, yeah, because there's lots of them in this warehouse it's not feeding through here. Yeah, this, this whole system has become a little bit tangled up and we'll need someone to go in there and pick apart the wiring and work out what's supposed to be happening there in order to sort it out. Ha. His notes say that he did increase the request for rare metals, but uh, and actually, to be fair, the uh, request has been, is now sufficient for rare metals. The problem is is more related to the Holmium cables, I suspect, and maybe some of the other things. So let's have a look at his let's have a look at his shopping list if we can find it. Here we go. So he's ordering a very small amount of Holmium because that was at least when it was set up being brought in by delivery cannon and shouldn't be anymore. Uh, Cryonite, well, he's got he's got 15,000 of it, so that plenty of that has come in. I'm not sure which of these I would increase significantly. Maybe, maybe the plastic, because that's fairly... I don't know, I was going to say the plastic because it's dense, but I, but I don't know if you want to increase the dense ones. Something that you get through quite a lot of, anyway. Maybe maybe, maybe blue circuits would be a good one. But something in here probably should be increased to, to enable the train to fill up a bit more. But that said, if he starts bringing the Holmium cables up from the ground properly, uh, then that will probably fill the train up quite nicely. And I think that's something he's going to get through a lot of. So adding in the Holmium cables to the system, I think will fit it quite nicely. The final type of data card that's needed for Energy 4 is of course the um, the solar data and so this requires again requires a spaceship to go out and then Tristan has as you can see here got four uh, four probes and the ten rockets available because we're okay with with making the rockets but the probes are still proving a little bit difficult because as, as we discussed earlier they need a lot of memory cards and it's a thousand memory cards for each one of these so it's going to be it's going to take quite a lot of trains worth of, uh, of the memory cards coming through before that's going to start working but when it does Tristan has put in a bit of a mark belt over here that's going to pour all the uh, all those um, solar data cards down this belt all the way across here and then feed them in the back of um, uh, his science area and then allow them to come down here. I I said this feels a bit a, a bit ridiculous, but he pointed out that his belt that goes across here isn't actually that much longer than mine, which just goes across here. Um, and he, he's not entirely wrong. They are both fairly ridiculous, uh, but I, th I, I do think his is a bit worse. But it's just going, but it doesn't really matter. It's just going, going across the cold uh, darkness of space. It's not going to get in the way of anything. And it's it's going to, yes, it's going to stockpile quite a lot of the data cards, but yeah, never mind. Uh, I suppose actually if you include the vertical part of my belt where it comes all the way down here as well, they are probably pretty similar lengths. And yes, the two spaceships probably should be the other way around um, because they're, the belts are crossing over like that. But Never mind. I um, I can't remember why I set them up this way around. I think I think I had a reason for it at the time, but I have no idea what that reason was now. Finally, for energizing, energizing and and the science, these spaceships do of course require fuel, and so we, we've got it. We've got a fuel drop off station. No, oh no, we, we're passing the fuel all the way down this this really long pipe here, um, because it's made relatively close by. But Tristan has also bumped up the requests for lithium and rare metals because we kept running out of those up here. We weren't bringing them up in large enough quantities or at least we weren't filling the train up and triggering it to leave. And so we were running out of um, ion stream. No, we were running out of particle stream, which meant we were running out of ion stream, which meant we couldn't fuel our spaceships. And that's a bad thing because we're rather reliant on spaceships now and all the rest of the cloud stuff that's going on over here as well. We've done some expansion on the mining front as well. So Tristan says he's put in three new core miners down on Norvis. I imagine they're probably going to be around here in the bottom somewhere. So that could be one of them. Uh, maybe that one and maybe that one. So we've got three of them. Those are quite long belts bringing the resources over to the station here. But yeah, never mind. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, we've got... Oh, these... Ah, there's some missing here because there's some creep. So this isn't quite finished. We need, we need to have the belt come up around the top of here. Or we need to get rid of the creep. Either way... 
Uh, it needs to not be. It needs to not be like that. Uh, this is this is this is uh, this is a problem. Uh, this one, on the other hand, seems to be running absolutely fine and has completely filled up this station. So the fact there aren't any trains coming out here and this station's this this warehouse has completely filled up tells me we probably need some more um, core core carrying uh, core chunk carrying trains on the system to to cope with the new uh, the new core mines that have been added in. Um, especially this one is going to be filled up twice as fast once that uh, belt gets fixed. And then if this is another new one, this is probably going to be having the same problem. Oh, no, this one is still filling up uh, but there is but it's, it's quite close to full and I by the look of it there aren't any trains making it all the way out here this again comes down to the trains prioritizing near things when they can so they're uh, rather than going to rather than going from here and going out to all of the core mines or each in turn they will go to the nearest ones now overall that doesn't that you will get exactly the same level of throughput because they won't go to a core mining station unless there's enough there for them to pick up but it still means there's quite a lot of um, there's quite a lot of core mines that get completely filled filled up like that and well these these core trains, as soon as they've unloaded, presumably why are you still, oh you're un still unloading as soon as this train unloads it will leave immediately and that is a good sign that we could do with a few more core trains. Also I noticed there's a lot of bots coming over here at the moment, or at least there were and that's because we've got uh, one of my, uh, Mark's trains has arrived and has unloaded a large quantity of belts and things that have been uh, s stashed on Big Red but you know that's a good thing, this does get them back it gets them back from those remote planets and means we can then sort of sort them out and start using them in, in more useful ways, so you know it's, it's not actually a problem we do seem to have an enormous amount of... Oh no, I was going to say an enormous amount of ice. Actually, it's not that much. It's just because it's, there's more being brought in, perhaps. I'm not sure. But yes, we do seem to we seem to be unloading these uh, core chunk trains about as fast as we, as we can, as fast as they're being brought in. But it's still not enough. Um, we could do the trick where you put in a few more signals along the side here so that the second train can start pulling in as soon as the first train leaves, and that will help a little bit. More, putting in more trains along here won't actually help all that much. We'll just get more of them queuing up here because it does look like we are unloading them literally as fast as they're coming in. Maybe we need to. We could upgrade this to purple so the trains unload a little bit quicker. Or, um, but to be honest, I think we're just we've just got core chunks coming in so quickly. We can't deal with them, and the, this chest here is it's not it's not filling up because we are emptying it as fast as it's being put in. But we're not seeing any gaps on these belts. The trains are coming through fast enough to keep keep the system flowing he says watching out for another core, core chunk train to come in um, they do seem to be there does seem to be a very very steady supply of um, of the core chunks being passed through so uh, yeah I don't know if we can I don't know if we can increase this very much that said we have now got to a point where there aren't any um, any more core tr chunk trains queued up here oh no here comes the next one will it be able to will it be able to get in before this train leaves and I think the answer is a definite maybe Oh, yep, there we go. It got in just in time. Now, what I was suggesting earlier is if we put additional um, signals in along here like this, uh, though, though there is one already, but we can we can have more. I mean, you could you can put them in every single square along here. Um, just well, every other square because it won't let you put them in every single square. If we put them in like that, then the trains will be able to leave. Uh, the, sorry, the next train will pull in a little bit more directly behind this one as it pulls out, and you can get a tiny bit more throughput out of it. But because, as I say, we seem to have enough. Oh no, we have we have run out now because there's uh, there's a little bit of congestion down here. So this train hasn't been able to get in quite in time. Uh, and maybe some more signals along the bottom of here, so trains leaving along this route don't get in the way of these core trains coming in. So, oh, and there we go, there's a gap. So we could get a little bit more throughput in there. Um, but it is pretty close to, we're pretty close to having maximum throughput of core fragments here for the system that we've got. Whether we dis whether we want to upgrade this to have even more uh, core, chunk proce core chunk processing going on, I'm not sure. Because if we're looking at this, we have... We have a we have plenty of well we have plenty of iron ore plenty of stone we are turning those into landfill, uh, which means everything else is full. <sighs> Maybe we just need to stop building more core. But then that said, we're using up all of the copper and all of the rare metals at the moment. Those are being streamed through into the stations over here. So we seem to be getting through those. We seem we're getting through the coal. We're getting through the uranium. So I think just churning through as much as much of the free resources as we can definitely very worth it and yes we need to put in more trains now because we've got a cl clearly got a gap in here and where the system has has, uh, has ground to a halt ever so slightly we could put in some more signals in here as well to allow these trains to come in slightly sooner actually no that one's a bad idea because that could lead to a train being parked halfway in and out it shouldn't because we should fit exactly two trains in here but i still think it's a bad idea but now that these these signals have been placed so you'll be able to see what i mean about the next train being able to pull in a, li a lot more quickly uh, when this one empties it starts to leave, and then as soon as it gets to there, this train can then pull forwards. And so you have a, a much smaller gap 
between the, between one train unloading and then the next train unloading. And so we might at this point start to see this this uh, this warehouse start to actually gradually fill up a little bit if we have enough of these trains coming in. And as you can see, we've got yeah, we've got another core train there. Anyway, I feel like I've talked about the core train unloading system a bit too much now, so let's move on to something else. <laughs> Over on Njord, Tristan says he's now expanding out towards the very la very final mine. So over here, Tristan, as we've discussed before, does the um, the hopping out with Roboports thing rather than going out there himself with his own robots and building things up. So it's a very very slow process to build all of this up. If we look if we look closely, we carefully, we might be able to see somewhere out here there are a couple of robots that are flying over. There they are, but they've run out of power, so they're coming back over here to re recharge. Um, this might be a problem. He might he might never actually get this built because it looks like they're getting down here, they're recharging, they're setting out this way, they're getting part way across, they're going, oh no, I've run out of power, so they're then coming back down here to recharge. So we may never actually see this bit finished. But in theory, <laughs> eventually this road report will be placed, and then this this area of, of um, track and landfill and so on can be placed. We'll get the we'll get the final core miner in down here, and then Tristan will have basically maxed out um, Njord as best as possible for uh, for core mining. Uh, it's going to be a little while till that happens, though, because, yeah, it's a bit problematic. So in the meantime, he's also put in an additional uh, traditional-style mine. He says west of the... Ah, oh, here we go. West of the uh, the processing. So this is pulling up the Holmium Ore, uh, or Holmanite, it's probably called. There's a gap in it there. Well, that could be. Uh, oh, that's because there was, there was swamp, and he's put down the landfill, but it hasn't put in the piece of belt yet. That can be brought around here and then fed in at the top of top of here. Uh, so we've now got three supplies. We've got the uh, the Holman, Holmium, crushed Holmium. No, no, we've got the Holmanite coming in from the core chunk processing. We've got the Holmanite coming in from the station up here and also from these belts over here. And that seems feels like I I don't know why we're not feeding a bit more of it through here. Um, these underground belts are oh I see these underground belts are broken. Um, Ah, so he's he right. He's branched this off round here in order to merge it with what's coming from the mine, and hasn't finished off the underground belts here. So we've got a bit of a shortage of it coming through. But if we if we now go in and delete those, as is clearly his intention, uh, and we'll have to put in another one of these here like that, then you can see we're now starting to flow through a decent chunk of holmite through here, and that will allow all of these crushers to start running a bit faster, and then all of this to run faster, all of this to run faster, and so on, and so we should get a nice bump in the amount of holmium coming through. Um, sadly, Tristan has built this thing up with the old style of chemical plants, and it's absolutely enormous. So, uh, any sort of upgrades here is going to be re require enormous quantities of ripping stuff up and rebuilding it, but... You know, maybe maybe he'll do that at some point in the future. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll reckon it's not needed. But yeah, so we've now got nice, nice steady streams of the Holmanite coming through. We can crush, crush it all down, and we should we should see larger quantities of um, Holmium coming out at the other end. But it's going to need to filter through all of these different stages before we'll actually see that improvement. So we probably won't before the end of the video. Over on Bigrid, Mark says he is. He has nearly cleaned out the final biters, so he has he has a glaive beam going around like this, dealing with any remaining biters, and it's dealt. It looks like it's dealt with all of the nests. So now it's just wandering around killing actual biters. Oh no, there's, there's a couple of worms left over here. Maybe it'll go. Oh, there's, and there's some, some nests up here as well. Okay, so there are there are a few biters and things left that need to be dealt with. But he's very nearly there. Very nearly completely sanitized this entire planet. Uh, and when he has, he's uh, he's going to have to then be very careful with um, keep, keeping the uh, biter meteors off it because it is a to Melange planet, but he once he's done that, once he, he's got enough guns to do that, so I think that's going to be fine. So that means he's then going to be able to expand out and come out and just basically get all of the uh, core seams out here and, and, and uh, massively upgrade his uh, core mining. And maybe that'll mean he won't need to do quite as much of this normal traditional uh, traditional mining. And this seems to be seems to be barely. Oh no, it, it, it is running at a, at, a, at a solid blue belt coming out. So yeah, he is currently using this mine. But maybe after he's upgraded all of the uh, all the core mines into to. Um, uh, to supplying the system, maybe he, maybe this won't run as much, and we'll, we'll, we'll see once he's got it done. Over on Talos, I'm doing something fairly similar. We have the energy glaive wandering around over here, burning up the biters. I've only got one of them, whereas, um, because, um, whereas Mark has about four. But once he's finished on his planet, I'll probably nick them and use them somewhere else. Why are you going up to these biter nests up here, wasting time traveling when you could just kill these ones off? I, the, lo the logic of these things um, astounds me and appalls me, it just because of, mostly because of the complete lack of logic. In fact, it looks like it came in here, killed all of these, in here, killed all of these ones, and then, oh, I guess, then it decided that it wanted to come up and do the, one of these nests up here, right, and it just happened to do some damage here on the way through. This was all incidental. Um, 
sure. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, it'll come over. It, it eventually will will click, make this planet safe. And once that's happened, then I'll be able to push out and do a few, do more of the uh, set up more barrel mines because, as we discussed in the past, I would like to have a bit more barrel available here to, so the beryllium can run a bit faster. It's basically working. We are making we are producing it faster than we're using it. So I think the rate of production of beryllium is okay. We're producing it at about 400 per minute. It's a bit bursty, but it is being, it's about, I'd say calling it an average of about 400 is probably fair. Um, and so with this number down here. And we use it in a brief burst of about 300 and something per minute for a short time. And it's starting to use it again a little bit over here. It's not really, be, we're not really churning through it. Unlike the other two, where, we, for example, the, the, the Holmium uh, is being produced at about, well, it has been being, on average, about 116 per minute with a bit of a dip in there. Uh, which, last time we were using it, we are using it at about, about 100 per minute as well, so that matches. So maybe, once we get a spaceship through, we'll have, probably have a bit of a burst of it being used, but maybe things will calm down a little bit, it's kind of hard to tell. The Iridium production seems to have tailed off to zero, and the... Um, and the iridium use also has tailed off to zero. That's worrying um, because, well, I don't know why it's not being made. Basically, uh, <laughs> it's only been it's only been the last 15 minutes or so, so it's probably in the time I've been making this video. So we don't have too too serious a problem. Uh, looking back over the longer term, it's kind of hard to tell, but we can tell that we've been making the beryllium at about 234 per minute and using it at about 150. So that seems to be okay. Iridium producing at 123, using at 108, maybe okay, kind of hard to tell at this stage. And the um, and the same with the Holmium, 95 and 74. So we are producing it faster than we're using it, um, but those zeros at the end worry me a bit because I don't think we should ever be using none of any of the resources. Going back to Njord, we can see this healthier stream of Holmanite has led to a, a healthier stream of crushed Holmanite or powder coming out here. And then probably a slightly better stream of the powder coming out and so more of the uh, of the powder, I don't know, too many different stage, stages. And so this should have given us a bit of a boost to the Holmium production. So the system does seem to be working, although I do note that this uh, this this balancer here uh, is, not do is not doing a very good job because these two are not able to both flow in merrily. So we're getting 50% of the throughput down here because they're being merged onto a single belt. So uh, maybe if we took this one over here, then things would be a little bit better. Uh, similarly from over here we're also merging these belts in as well now I don't know how much this matters because we are clearly capable of dealing with all of the uh, ore that's coming out of these trains uh, so it's, it, it's it's a sort of a, a, a throughput in this area rather than an overall total amount that we're making but you know I feel that sort of tidying these things up a little bit is, is, is generally a nice idea and now we take a look at the research. So, because we've got Bio 3 in at least some quantities, we've done the uh, we've done the unit capsules for big biters and big spitters. So we can now we can now make those. We can throw them out and have friendly biters on our side. I don't know how useful those are, to be honest. Um, they're a thing that we've been able to make so research. So we have um, I, we've not used any of the earlier ones. But then I think it's because at this point it's behemoth biters everywhere. So sending in a, a small biter against a behemoth biter is not going to go particularly well. We've also developed the anti anti biter virus capsule. Uh, this is apparently it uh, contains a powerful virus that will cull a significant portion of the biter population, damage biter DNA, regressing them into a less dangerous form. So this sounds absolutely fantastic. I'm not quite sure how we would use these. I guess we you could, maybe you go and throw them out against the um, against uh, biters and reduce the, the evolution rate or level for all of the biters across the entire universe. I, I'm not sure. It sounds a bit overpowerful if it is, but uh, it also sounds really really nice because it brings the biters down to a much lower level. So I think we should churn, try and churn out a few of these. The ingredients look a little bit tricky. Uh, it's probably and take an en enormous chain of machines to make all of those things, but it'd be interesting to play with. We did Deep Space Discovery 12, and uh, that was mostly in because I screwed up and put some things on the wrong belt and, and needed to uh, needed to do make some um, astro sciences in order to uh, to use them up. But uh, so that was uh, uh, we didn't really need to do another Deep Space Zone discovery, uh, but we have because um, because because it, it cleared out some stuff for me, which was convenient. <laughs> We have researched AI cores, which are, uh, they're, in, they're another intermediate, so they're a thing that will be used presumably for some of these more advanced mach machines, so an advanced research server apparently, supercomputers, and we'll need them for deep space science in the future. So it's not, not doesn't really get us anything right now, but it's going to be very, very useful later on. And related to that, we've done the uh, advanced research server, and it looks like this is perhaps going to be needed for some of the more advanced later on sciences. Maybe we're going to need to use these for deep space science, which we'll fi find out as we get further on. We might also be able to use it to upgrade some of our existing research servers to, to run faster or more efficiently or with more 
well, you can't make them run more efficiently because you can't put prod mods in things in space. But it might it might make them run a bit faster in a smaller area, so that could be quite useful. And we've also done Supercomputer Three, which is uh, which is going to allow us to do, maybe do better recipes for some of the card recycling, some better uh, and more advanced recipes for some of the science things as well. So that's going to be quite useful. And it looks like it's also required in order to make deep space science. So it's going to be very useful for that. Presumably, you can't make deep space science cards in a in a normal in a tier two supercomputer, so you need a tier three. And now we're working on Mining Productivity 8, but I'll talk about that next week when we'll probably have finished it. And so, that brings us to the end of the video. This has gone on quite a lot longer than I was expecting, blimey. Um, sorry, sorry about the really long episode here. Um, I hope you don't mind. But we will be back on Monday to carry on with the stream, We will, uh, where we will be fixing all of the problems I've been looking at today and pushing back the boundaries of science. Hopefully I'm going to actually launch those spaceships and go out and get some of the asteroid and solar data from there. Uh, we will also be back. We will also be then continuing the stream on Thursday. So because we're doing funny shenanigans with the schedule the week after, we thought we'd stick in an extra stream just to get people used to having streams on Thursdays. So there'll be a lot of stuff going on there. There'll be a lot more videos at the weekend as well, I suspect, because if we're having two streams, then I'm going to have a lot to talk about. So maybe we'll have three videos next weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We shall see. No promises yet. We'll see how much stuff there is for me to talk about. I shall be continuing with the XCOM stream on Wednesday, so uh, that's going kind of well. I had some technical difficulties last week, um, but the technical difficulties were much worse than the alien difficulties. We started running into much bigger and stronger aliens now, though, so it's getting a bit more dangerous out there. But we are getting bigger guns and more abilities to help us deal with them. So I think things are still kind of balanced. I'm certainly enjoying it very much, so do come along for the Wednesday streams as well. And as I said, then there'll be the videos at the end of the week, and also XCOM videos on Tuesdays, so keep an eye out for those, where I'm playing some of the historical challenges, which are uh, interesting, because you get to play with units you wouldn't normally use. So, loads of stuff happening on the channel, I hope to see you back for all of that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.